This is the Planck length. It's a lineal measurement in meters and is in dimension one. As we saw from the opening slides, the Planck length is the scale at which classical ideas about gravity and space-time cease to be valid and quantum effects dominate. Just for fun, we're going to use the Planck length for our traditional measurement calculations of objects. According to Wikipedia, if a length smaller than this is used in any measurement, then it has a chance of being wrong due to quantum uncertainty. Houston, we have a problem. We established in episode 12 that for each dimension there is a direct ratio relationship between an object in traditional measurement and a sphere in dimensional measurement. Those relationships are dependent on the radius in dimension 1 being half the length. We can all do the math using the Planck length in both traditional and dimensional measure, but if what Wikipedia states is true, then all the calculations using a radius of half the Planck length have a chance of being wrong due to quantum uncertainty. The traditional calculations will be correct, but the dimensional calculations will probably not be. How is this possible? Measure with a square shape and it's right? Measure with a sphere shape and it's probably wrong, even though we've shown that a direct ratio relationship exists between squares and spheres for each dimension? That Wikipedia statement may have to be changed since we can show that using half the Planck length as a radius in our formula for dimensional measurement produces exactly the same length in dimension 1 for traditional measurement. As for the other dimensions, all the ratio relationships remain intact with the traditional or dimensional measurements simply being different sizes and shapes. It appears that you can use a smaller length than the Planck length as a radius with no ill effect. Or it may mean that a radius is not length at all but something else since it appears to straddle dimensions. Next, according to Wikipedia, if equations are written in Planck units, you can do away with many physical constants and not have to worry about dimensions. Say what? We at Dimensionology are totally okay with doing away with many physical constants. I assume this was written by physicists after all, but we disagree completely with not having to worry about dimensions. As we saw in episode 12, one lineal inch does not equal one square inch or one cubic inch. The same as a single Planck length does not equal a square Planck length or a cubic Planck length. So from our perspective, dimensions do in fact matter, even at the Planck length level. Looking at the screen, you can see that the value of the Planck area is massively smaller than the value of the Planck length. But because these are different units, lineal meters versus square meters, these numbers are still useful. If these values were both in lineal meters, then the smaller value would be less than the Planck length and most likely wrong due to quantum uncertainty. That same value in square meters, though, is not suspect because it is built with the known boundary of a square having four lines, each line of which is equal to the Planck length. Length is what ties dimensionology directly to physics. The Planck length in meters, representing the minimum distance for our classical physics, should also be subject to the rules of dimensionology in exactly the same way as any other length. There's nothing special about the Planck length other than it is the smallest measurement in dimension one that we can confidently use. Not worrying about dimensions when using the Planck length is only one issue we've encountered with the conventional wisdom. As we mentioned in episode 12, our first issue was mathematics' tendency to ignore dimensions completely and to compare their values only. This results in one being equal to one squared being equal to one cubed etc. Another issue we have has to do with our current notation and the shape of the object the notation implies. I recently came across an article online asking, what shape has an area formula of 2 pi r squared? I was quite surprised to see this response from study.com. It states, a shape that would have an area formula of 2 pi r squared would be two congruent circles that are tangent to one another, meaning they intersect at a single point. Hmm. I guess that means that 4 pi r squared would look something like this. And yet we also know that this is exactly the same notation for the surface of a two-sphere. Clearly these shapes are not equal and yet they are both correctly notated. Study.com has interpreted 2 pi r squared as two volumes of a two ball, whereas we at Dimensionology have interpreted 2 pi r squared as half the surface of a two-sphere. It would appear that our current notation has a tendency to default to volume over surface. Looking again at the conventional wisdom equations, we see that the radius exponent for the volume is always equal to the dimension name, and that the radius exponent for the surface is always equal to the dimension name minus 1. The problem arises when the radius exponent is reduced to a number. In this case, is r squared a volume or a surface? We have no way of knowing within the limitations of the current notation. To differentiate between these two interpretations, we'll be adopting the following change in our notation. A 2 in parentheses followed by pi r squared will mean 
two of the following shape, whereas a two without parentheses followed by pi r squared will mean a single shape. As an example, four in parentheses pi r squared will equal four shapes of the volume of a two ball, where four without parentheses pi r squared will equal the single surface of a two sphere. What's important to note here is that by traditionally not distinguishing which shape we are referring to, volume or surface, and defaulting to volume, we run the risk of accidentally changing dimensions without our knowledge or even misunderstanding what dimension we're in altogether. In our example, study.com has provided an answer in one dimension, and dimensionology has provided an answer in two dimensions. This one omission of not identifying which dimension or dimensions we're in has great potential to undermine our further understanding of the overall importance of dimensions in general and produce misinformed results. This is Jeff Zabo for Dimensionology. Up next, Kepler's Third Law.